Lately, lots of people have called each other snowflakes. But what about real snowflakes? Every single one is different. They branch out in many different patterns with shapes, forks, and structures that are honestly one of nature's most beautiful things. Why are they all flat? I mean, are they all flat? They sure seem like they're all flat. Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today on Waste Time, we ask the question, why exactly are all snowflakes flat? So before we answer why, we do need to answer if. Are all snowflakes flat? Well, the answer isn't a clear yes or no. It is essentially flat. They are relatively flat, but they aren't a two-dimensional structure. Every one of the branches and shapes and geometry and all of that has a texture. It's not flat. When something is a diamond shape, it has sides and they protrude ever so slightly. Now keep in mind, a snowflake is tiny. There is so little protrusion, but there is protrusion. It is a 3D structure. But then again, in all honesty, so is a pancake. Pancakes have depth, they have shape. They certainly don't have a perfectly geometrically even side on both sides. But relatively speaking, obviously a pancake is flat. And so is a snowflake. So the assumption we're going to make going forward is specifically that it is flat, but relatively so because there is room for nuance. However, it's a bit hard to answer the question, why exactly are snowflakes flat if we're saying they're not flat? To a microscopic organism, a snowflake isn't flat, but we are not microscopic organisms. So for all intents and purposes, they are flat and here's why. So let's talk about ice. Ice has a hexagonal crystal structure. At least most naturally formed ice has a hexagonal structure. Now keep in mind, there are other kinds of ice, but snowflakes do not come in other kinds of ice because a lot of those kinds of ice are created in a lab under specific conditions. Ice forms in hexagonal rings. It has an oxygen atom on every vertex, and all of the edges of the hexagons are formed by hydrogen bonds. Snowflakes form when a hexagonal base forms, and off of the sides of that base form more hexagons. Now that may sound a bit simple, but it's not quite so much. When the water freezes, it flattens out to the hexagonal structure I referred to when talking about how ice is made up. Now that's just one tiny, tiny little hexagon. So what happens next depends on atmospheric conditions, what types of clouds there are, what temperature it is, etc, etc. Obviously, the colder it is, the quicker things freeze, and the smaller the hexagons will be. But there's three processes that happen that determine the snowflake shape. So obviously, because ice freezes in a hexagon, different parts of a snowflake show edges, and those edges specifically yield a place for more hexagons to form. As faceting continues, the snowflake grows, it becomes larger. So at the facets, the edges, each area of the crystal develops various facets, some of which don't develop at the same rate. You end up having an asymmetrical growth among the faces of the shape. As this happens, the crystal will branch meaning more crystals will grow off of the various faces. Those crystals will develop a little bit faster than the other crystal on account it's already cooled to a certain degree. The base crystal has obviously had a little bit more time to freeze up, to form, and is therefore already larger. These branching crystals start off on the edges, or to be specific, along the hydrogen bonds more crystals form. And this keeps happening among the edges or the hydrogen bonds of every single one of the crystals. However, it's already cold. There's already a base level coldness. So all of these are freezing and crystallizing much faster, meaning they're smaller. They don't have the time to accumulate the mass that the base crystal, the one at the center, has. But more importantly, to speak about how it stays flat, if you notice, like I said, these edges branch off specifically on the edge because of the arrangement of the atoms with oxygen at the corners and hydrogen bonds for the edges, these larger crystals form with that same pattern, just on a larger scale. Now, because it's happening faster, the final stage, the sharpening of the snowflake, is when the edges of the snowflake become thinner. Obviously, because material is accumulating faster, it has less time to become thick, so it doesn't. 
This is why a snowflake tapers off instead of just becomes one big plane of ice. If it didn't do this, it couldn't support itself on account it is really not a lot of water frozen into a tiny practical shape. Now these are basic stages, they're essentially how it happens, but it's different for every single snowflake and that's the thing that we have to understand. Weather systems are chaotic, they do not stay the same ever. They are always changing and taking into account that essentially ice crystallizes specifically on a horizontal and vertical axis. However, it grows in depth much slower, helps provide the basis for exactly how a snowflake stays flat. An ice molecule is flat and it tends to form growing out from the edges of that flat shape as opposed to outwardly. Now, yes, they do stack because obviously ice isn't all a sheet, but the way snowflakes work up in the air as they form is just a chaotic accumulation of frozen water. Because those conditions are always changing, snowflakes are always different. This is why you don't find snowflakes that are exactly the same, because their process is changing at all times. But that process always produces results that seem basically flat because of the molecular structure of ice. It's basically flat. And as ice grows out among the faces of a flat shape, it stays flat most of the time. I'm not saying this is 100% of the time, because again, the conditions are very chaotic. But at least you now have a basic understanding of exactly why snowflakes are flat. It's obviously a very interesting process and there's bound to be comments and questions about it so please leave them in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped in any way understand exactly what is going on, do us a big favor and click the like button. If you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos all the time and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero and we'll see you next time here on waste time.